welcome the Corpus Christi Roman Catholic Church in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania for the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Welcome. And we are grateful that you have chosen to spend this time with us via live streaming to offer ourselves to the Lord and encounter Him in the sacred liturgy. As we prepare ourselves to be united through Him, with Him, and in Him, in praise and thanksgiving to Almighty God, for it is truly right and just, let us prayerfully anticipate entering these sacred mysteries. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, as we approach the celebration of the Paschal mystery of your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, we come as one sick to the physician of life, as one unclean to the fountain of mercy, as one blind to the light of eternal brightness, as one poor and needy to the Lord of heaven and earth. So I ask you, most generous Lord, graciously heal my infirmity, wash me clean, illumine my blindness, enrich my poverty, and clothe my nakedness. May I receive the bread of angels, the King of kings and Lord of lords, with such reverence and humility, such contrition and devotion, such purity and faith, and such resolve and determination as may secure my soul's salvation. Grant, most kind God, that I may receive the body of your only begotten Son in such a way that I may become a loving part of his mystical body and counted among his members. O oh, most loving Father, grant me your beloved Son. While on this earthly pilgrimage, I receive him under the veil of this sacrament, so may I come at last to see him face to face for all eternity, for he lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Happy Easter to our parishioners and visitors of Corpus Christi Parish. One announcement today, the church celebrates Divine Mercy Sunday each year on the second Sunday of Easter. We will have a special holy hour with the Sun Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 p.m. today. Please join us for this special feast.
Today we celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass on the second Sunday of Easter. Our Mass intention is for the intentions of John and Herta Aguare and family. Our processional song is number 403, Christ the Lord is Risen Today, 403. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us ask Almighty God to bless this water he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy be present to your people's prayers. And for us, who recall the wondrous work of our creation and still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. 
For you have created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy. For through water you freed your people from slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through water the prophets proclaimed the new covenant. You were to enter upon with the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen.
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very reoccurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the, of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be attentive to God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was failing, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord. And he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks. the builders rejected has become the cornerstone 
by the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came, so the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. 
Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and bring your hand and put it into my side and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today, this eighth day, this octave of Easter, the scriptures put our attention not only on the reality that the Lord Jesus has been risen, raised to new life in a glorified body, a real and concrete body, like the same one, in fact, it was the same one, nailed to the cross. And he, Jesus makes that clear as he points out the nail marks in his hands and the wound in his side. It's so very important, 20 centuries later, we understand that Jesus' resurrection is not simply a spiritual thing, but a corporeal thing, because it affects the way we understand the eternal life God invites us to by believing in his son Jesus. St. John makes so much of an emphasis on the need to believe, to trust in what God is extending to us through Christ crucified and risen. And that includes the whole person living in communion with God forever. That is what we believe is eternal life. But notice as well today on this eighth day, the church using this scripture passage helps us to understand the depth of God's work of salvation for us. Notice Jesus seems to do something rather strange. He breathes on the apostles. It should recall for us when God breathed over the face of the earth and brought into existence everything, including human beings made in God's image and likeness. If we think of God's work of redemption simply as removing sin, we fail to see what God is doing. And so today, on this second Sunday of Easter, as the church celebrates Divine Mercy Sunday, let us see what God is offering us in its fullness. And in part, it was captured by our opening prayer, as we prayed for the grace to grasp and rightly understand what font we have been washed in, what spirit we've received to be, give us new birth, and by what blood we have been redeemed the font, the Holy Spirit, and the precious blood of Jesus. All three are oriented to us growing in a relationship with Almighty God. It's not simply being cleansed of sin, the stain of disobedience to God. God desires to regenerate us. And so on the eighth day, we're seeing that God is remaking his creation through the power of the power we experience in the waters of baptism, by which we're not only but truly cleansed of sin, but made a new creation, a beloved son or a beloved daughter of God. It's by the power of that Holy Spirit that brought everything into creation that we are now empowered to live a deeper relationship with God as children, his beloved sons and daughters, but also as faithful disciples of the Lord Jesus, knowing him more fully, loving him completely, and following him faithfully, and recognizing and living as temples of that Holy Spirit, by which we're then more docile and attentive to that tremendous gift that is made available to us because of the precious blood that flowed from the cross. As we proclaim God's divine mercy, it's that love that desires for us to be in a deeper relationship with himself. And so on this eighth day, may the eighth day always, the day of the Lord, remind us of what God is offering to us 
And may we respond. May we who renewed our baptismal promises last Sunday, rejoicing in the resurrection of the Lord, live that new life more deeply every day. God has done everything we need to, he needs to do for us. He simply needs our cooperation. May the waters of baptism by which we were cleansed inspire us to live more deeply those relationships with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That is how we indicate that we truly are grateful and appreciate God's divine mercy. Notice as well, as Jesus breathed on them, recreating humanity who would believe in him, he gives to the apostles, he gives to the church, the tremendous gift of the sacrament of confession by which after baptism we're forgiven, renewed, and regenerated to be truly God's beloved children because Christ is risen. Truly he is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. The community of believers were of one heart and one mind, united by their faith in Jesus, united by the same faith we profess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As witnesses of the resurrection, the apostles were sent forth to continue the work of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray then for the mission of the church and for the needs of the whole world. That, led by the successors of Peter and the apostles, the church will boldly proclaim the truth of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who guide the economy of nations will distribute resources fairly among all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That people weighed down by guilt may find pardon and peace in the divine mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> that our working week may be transformed by the joy of Easter. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the newly baptized find in the church both welcome and challenge. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That the members of this community strive to be of one heart and one mind in the risen Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> that the sick of our parish family may find comfort in the divine mercy of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. That the risen Christ 
will bring the dead to share in the victory, especially Deborah Appenzeller and Christine Horn. Let us pray to the Lord. For the prayers in the Book of Intentions and the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. <laughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Most merciful Father, as your people continue the work of the apostolic witnesses, grant these petitions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing number 413, Alleluia, number one.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands with the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all in this holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you've been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation 
and count it among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O oh God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as one who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, the place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, 
Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our, our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that a reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. This afternoon we have a holy hour with a sung version of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. I encourage all of you to join us as we rejoice and give thanks to God for his divine mercy in Christ crucified and risen. And we see that very clearly here at Corpus Christi in, these, in this octave, in these eight days. We've had 20 baptized, all little ones. So please keep them in your prayers as this new life God has given is so very vulnerable and needs our support, our example, and our intercession. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten, endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. St. Michael, Michael, the Archangel, the Archangel defend us in, in battle. battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly, humbly pray. pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the, by the power of God, God cast into hell Satan, Satan and all evil spirits, devour the world, seeking the ruin of souls. souls. 